In this tutorial, we're going to cover timecode triggering. There's two different behaviors you can use with timecode here in PvP3, triggering and following. These are going to be separate tutorials, and this one that we're doing currently will cover triggering. So in order to get our timecode set up, we're going to look here at the top right corner of the program with this clock icon here. And when you click on the clock icon, you'll see that there's a number of different settings that we're going to set up for our timecode. First off is the device. So any audio input device you can use to bring in your timecode signal. So when we click on the device here, you'll see that I'm using a Scarlett 6i6 USB audio interface. So if I click on that, then I'll go ahead and select that as my device. The next thing you're going to want to do is click the listening box here so that you're actually listening for that timecode input. You'll see that as soon as I do this, the clock turns red to denote that I am listening for timecode, but I currently don't have any timecode values being displayed because I haven't chosen the proper channel that my audio is coming in on. So that's the second option here for channel, and this is going to show all of the different input channels available for your device, so this may be different for you. I happen to know that for the device that I'm using, my timecode is coming in on channel three, and you'll see that as soon as I select channel three, the timecode starts being displayed up here as it's moving in the program. Up next, if you'd like to monitor that sound of the timecode and just confirm that it's coming in properly, you can click the speaker icon here and that will send the sound of timecode to your monitor output so that you can confirm that that's coming in properly. And just underneath your channel options is the format option. PVP3 supports a number of different timecode formats, including 24, 25, 29.97 frames, and also 30 frames. My timecode is in 29.97, so I'm going to leave that selected in that menu there. And then is the default behavior. I mentioned this earlier, how I have two separate tutorials for each of these behaviors. So this is going to be the tutorial where we look at the trigger function, and there's a separate tutorial for follow. When I select trigger, you're going to see here that there's a quick little description of what that means. It says it fires a queue at a given timecode time, but will not react to other changes in timecode. This means that I can assign specific times to these queues that I have here in my playlist. And when the timecode reaches that time, it's going to trigger that queue, but then that's going to be the end of it. There's not going to be any more control over these queues via timecode other than simply to trigger them. So that's all my settings here in this window. I can go ahead and click out of that window. And now I'm gonna get my playlist prepared to actually trigger via timecode. The first step in that process is to right click on the name of the playlist here on the left hand side of the program. Then I'm going to go down to timing and select timecode. You'll see as soon as I do that, that this clock icon appears here in the playlist name, as well as over here on the right hand side, just next to the queue and action selection here in the playlist area. And this is the icon that we're going to use to actually arm the playlist once we're ready for it to respond to our timecode times that we've put in. So we're going to leave that unchecked for now, but we're going to click this button here in just a minute. So in order to assign our times, we're going to go into the action view. And you'll see that when the action view opens, that I've got my thumbnails for all of my cues here. And just below the thumbnails is a place to enter a time. And this is where I'm going to enter in the timecode value that I want to use to trigger this cue. So right now we can see that my time code just went to 559. And so now we're gonna set a couple times to trigger some of these clips. So we're gonna let this one trigger at 055945. And then we're gonna set this one to trigger at six o'clock. So you'll see here that I've now got my two clips ready to trigger. And this one is set to trigger at 55945. However, you see here that my time code is about to pass that and the clip didn't trigger. There's two other settings here that we need to make sure that we've done so that these will trigger correctly. The first of which is you actually have to assign your cues to individual layers so that you're triggering those cues to the proper layer. So we're gonna go ahead and assign this one to layer two. And then the last thing that we need to do is actually arm the playlist like I was talking about earlier so that it's listening for those timecode values. So now we'll change this setting to maybe 060020 and we're gonna go ahead and arm the playlist. And you'll see here in just a second that now our clip here has triggered onto layer two at that particular time. You'll also notice that these two cues switch places and that's because your cues will be listed in chronological order based off of the time that that cue is going to trigger. So that's about it for using the trigger function of timecode playback here in PVP3. And as I mentioned before, there's another tutorial that will cover timecode, the follow behavior, and that's going to be a separate tutorial 
For all of our tutorials and more information on PvP3, you can check out our website at www.renewedvision.com.